Shalom, Shalom, family. We got Ecclesiastes chapter 3, right? To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. And you go down to 7, and it says, A time to rend, a time and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, right? So, all I'm here to let y'all know today is that silence is power, right? There's power in silence. There's power in not saying nothing. You get what I'm saying? There's power in keeping your mouth shut. You get what I'm saying? That ups your value. Because not only is it multiple situations where it's simply just better for you to not say nothing, um, if you don't want to escalate an issue, if you don't want to get into a pointless argument, if you don't want to... Um, you know, if, if, if you don't want to harbor, if you don't want to hurt anybody, right? Or if you don't want to cause detriment to yourself, these are all reasons to stay silent. You know what I'm saying? There's a time for everything. And there's a good amount of times where you shouldn't be saying nothing, right? And there's a reason for these things, right? Because it can even change your status. How people view you and think about you just off of you being quiet, right? Because... Proverbs 17 and 27 says, he that has knowledge spareth his words and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. Even a fool, when he holds his peace is counted wise and he that shuts his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. So you will seem wise, you'll seem smart and knowledgeable just off of being quiet. You get what I'm saying? There adds power and value in your words when you do say something. Because if you're in a room and everybody in the room is chatting, right? Everybody in the room is talking and you've been quiet that whole time. By the time you say something, all eyes will be on you. You don't have to say nothing crazy important. It won't have to be the most wise thing, but because you was quiet for the rest of that time, that mean that you going have more of an impact with what you do say. You get what I'm saying? So you can seem as a wise man just by not talking that much. And that's also understanding not everything warrants a response. Not everything warrants a response. Everything doesn't um, need a response, right? Because especially when you're choosing to do things the right way, it's going to be a lot of things you start to realize them as temptations. People are going to try to get you out of line with your words. People are going to try to get you to say crazy stuff. People are going to get you to try to say anything, get into little bicker and matches with you. Um, you have to avoid all that. You get what I'm saying? It's, it's to destroy you. You know what I'm saying? It also says 18. Uh, I think this is 18 and 21. It says death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Right? So... If death and life were in the power of the tongue, would you just be overusing your words? Would you just be spamming stuff? Would you just be talking all the time and let that value go down? Because the more you saying, the more likely it is for detriment to come upon you. You get what I'm saying? The more, the more you say, the more can be used against you. That's why you also have to watch who you're talking to. You could be spitting wisdom, but just because of who you're saying it to, it can be used against you. You get what I'm saying? Especially if you choose a rule of, of speaking out against um, popular ideas and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? You say that to the wrong person, and they might condemn you as the damn devil. You get what I'm saying? So you have to watch these things, right? So I'm going to take y'all somewhere else. This is Psalms. Psalm 38. It says, They also that seek after my life lay snares for me, and they that seek my hurt speak mis mischievous things and imagine deceits all the day long. But I, as a deaf man, heard not, and I was as a dumb man that opened not his mouth. So, what, what is the psalmist talking about right now, right? 
He said they lay snares for me. You, you know what I'm saying? So he's showing you like what I was saying that everybody doesn't need a response. Everything doesn't need a response. Everything doesn't need to be called out. You get what I'm saying? This is King. This is a King. This is King David telling you that he was as a deaf man to those who were saying things about him, those who were laying snares, because you had to recognize it as a snare. You gotta recognize that most of the time when people are trying to pull certain things out of you, pull certain actions out of you, certain words, it's it's not to help you. You know, it's it's gonna be something to trample your words and rend them against you, right? So just be careful with your words and who you use them against. So he said, the people that seek my hurt speak mischievous things and imagine deceits all the day long. And he said he was as a deaf man to these things and he was as a dumb man. So he didn't hear it. He act like he didn't hear it. And he act like he couldn't even respond. I, I, I don't warrant a response to these things. And all that does is further liberate you. It further makes you more powerful, right? <clears throat> this is Psalm 39. It says, I said, I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue that I sin not with my tongue so know that it's possible to sin with your tongue the things you say out of your mouth I will keep my mouth with a bridle so bridle your tongue while the wicked is before me that's that's what I was saying with the who the who you're speaking to you have to understand most of the world is wicked so when you have certain people before you you have to be very careful in your manner of conversation you get what I'm saying? Be very careful about how loosely you speak. Even when it's regular talk. You get what I'm saying? It's power and all that. And the more powerful you are, the more powerful you, the more power your words will have. And that's going in a good or bad way. So that means you have the power to change somebody's life in a positive way. Or you can still be telling the truth. You can still be telling the same truth. But you could be offending that person and make that person hate you. Just like that. So you want to be careful how how you're talking, who you saying things to, and if you even talking in the first place, right? And you go on to say, it says, I was dumb with silence, and I held my peace even from good, and my sorrow was stirred. My heart was hot within me while I was musing the fire burn. Then spake I with my tongue. You get what I'm saying? It might be bothering. It might be bothering tongue you know a lot of us we got pride and ego you know we got that feel that need to always feel like to say something back like or you had to have the last word or you can't you know sometimes it's cool to be like all right you got it you get what i'm saying even even the bible saying my heart was hot within me you know when you start to feel that fire like rising up in you that anger you want to say something crazy or do something crazy that's the power comes from resisting it the power is in silence the strength is actually in walking away, whatever it is. The strength comes from not rendering evil to evil, right? And even the words of our Messiah, what did our Messiah say? You know, if a man smites you on the cheek, you know, turn the other one to him also. It's easier to recompense everyone exactly what they did to you. But in order to show the mercy and the forgiveness that our Father has shown us, because look at all of our all of our transgressions against the Father, right? All the things we've done wrong, and we weren't we weren't struck down on the spot. We weren't, you know, punished on the spot. We still have that mercy and forgiveness. That's why He says, "Forgive, as your Father in heaven has forgiven you," right? If you judge with your mouth, even if you ju judge with your heart, that's the same judgment that's going to be recompensed upon you. And that's not to say don't judge, because they um they misconstrue it with the uh, judging. Like the scriptures tell us to judge righteously. Judging is simply using your discernment. Knowing whether, to, to bring it back to the original point, knowing whether this is the right person to have this conversation with, knowing 
whether this is the right manner of conversation to be having in the first place. Um, you you have to be able to tell within a conversation whether it's getting in a direction that you ain't go, that you're not gonna entertain, or that it's better not to entertain. All of these things give you power. All of these things are power. Ignoring people is powerful. That adds to your power and it adds to your value. You get what I'm saying? And I wanna I wanna end it off with one last thing. Right? I wanna end it off with one last thing. Just a little quick little biblical story of how we should kind of approach things. And this is specifically if somebody is cursing you, you know, people talking crazy to you, you know, saying whatever they want, saying something crazy, talking out their mouth, you know, doing little slick stuff, like all that little stuff. It's a way to respond to it. Us as God's people, bro, we have to constantly be taking that more mature route. It's harder though, but understand that this is refining you. But always take that mature route. Now, <clears throat> 16. Now, this is when David, King David, you know, he was voyaging during wartime or whatever, and he passed this man. And this man, and this is a hard time for David too. He was going through a lot at this time. But this man that he's walking past is saying, come out, come out. And he's yelling this to King David. Come out, come out, you bloody man. And you man of Belial, meaning a demonic man. He's calling him a devil. Yahweh has returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul. In whose stead you have reigned. And the Lord has delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom your son. And behold, you are taken in your mischief because you are a bloody man. Right? So, this man is at war with his own son. He's losing soldiers. He's going through a hard time. His house has gotten taken over at this point. He's lost almost everything. Right, and it's this man that's basically trolling him, hassling him, heckling him. And one of his servants says, says, said unto the king, it says, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over, I pray thee, and take off his head. Right, so his servant Abishai wanted to respond in violence wanted to respond in violence and David says you know cause somebody's talking crazy I know a couple people that if somebody talking too crazy like yo you see what I'm saying so David basically long story short he says so let him curse because the Lord has said unto him curse David who shall then say wherefore has thou done so so who is gonna question why is this person doing this Meaning, don't be surprised when these people are coming at you for no reason. Mind you, this is King David we talking about. And he has some random man heckling him and cursing him, calling him evil and wicked and all these things. So don't, don't mind it too much when you get called your, your fair share, right? You see what I'm saying? So look, it says, Behold, my own son which came forth from my bowels seeketh my life. Now, how much more can this Benjamite do it? Leave him alone and let him curse before the Lord has bidden him. And this is the most important part. It may be that the Lord will look on my affliction and that the Lord will requite, requite, I guess, requite me good for his cursing this day. Right? So hopefully, the Most High will see me and see how I responded to this negativity because that's the only reason that evil and negativity is on this earth in order to hone the righteous. It's only here to reprove, it's, it's here to reprove the wicked and slay the wicked, other wickedness. And it's, it's also here to refine and strengthen the righteous, right? So he, fa he was faced with this evil and he's saying, hopefully the Most High will see this and will reward me through for not responding negatively to this temptation. 
what she was, right? But I didn't want to make this video too long. I just want y'all to understand that there's strength, there's power in, in walking away. There's strength in silence. There's strength in being quiet, being a few words. You get what I'm saying? And that's all, man. So all praises to the Most High. We gonna, we gonna catch up with y'all in another video, man. Y'all be safe.